Yellowstone supervolcano, how Norris geyser activity forced scientists to take action. Callum Horrocks Post UK reports. Yellowstone volcano scientists were forced to take drastic action after increased activity was recorded at the Norris geyser. Unearthed documents reveal. Well, we know that we've had a tremendous uptick in the steamboat geyser since last March. It's been going off just about every week. And steamboat geyser is in the Norris geyser base. And another geyser has also started activity there. That's the ledge geyser. It's called ledge because it's at the side of a hill. And uh, it makes a terrible noise whenever it goes off because it goes through a very tight opening, a very small aperture, and it has a very rumbling, whistling sound. So when you're standing pretty close to it, you have to scream at each other to hear, to hear each other speak. Now, it's a very noisy geyser. So you have a steamboat geyser and ledge geyser. Now, the Yellowstone supervolcano, located between uh, below Yellowstone National Park in the western U.S., it's between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and it's constantly being monitored by the United States Geological Survey, USGS, because of its capability to inflict disaster worldwide, not just to the United States. We know that the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was recently established in 2001. This was after a BBC documentary that came out late 2000 that brought the attention to the U.S. Uh, to to of the world to the Yellowstone supervolcano, and the U.S. government was uh, motivated enough to open up the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And since then, they've had a lot of work to do because Yellowstone has over 60 percent of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal spots. So it can inflict a disaster on global scale if it has a super eruption, as it had in the past. The last event of this kind has not occurred for 630 years, 30,000 years, 630,000 years, and no serious activity has happened in more than 70,000 years, even though they've had another 80 eruptions since those 70,000 years. Now, an incident that took place in 2003 caused a brief moment of concern for the geologists. An increase of heat and steam emissions from the North Geyser Basin led USGS researchers to step up their efforts to monitor any changes there. A report from 2003 explained activity in the North Geyser Basin increased and scientists logged higher ground temperatures and witnessed a greater number of geyser eruptions. Quote, in order to better understand the hydrothermal system at Yellowstone, a temporary network of monitoring equipment was installed, which was eventually followed by the installation of a more robust network, end quote. And they go on to explain ten temperature sensors are located in various steam channels and thermal features within the Norris Geyser Basin. The units are battery powered and are sufficiently small that they can be placed around the geyser basin in an unobtrusive manner. The new network allows scientists to monitor the geyser every few minutes and uh, gets reports about day-to-day -day changes. The USGS site explains currently they are programmed to record temperatures every two minutes. The radios transmit the recorded values daily to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO. Automatic plots are then generated to provide daily, weekly, monthly plots of temperature values. The site also goes on to reveal how new technology allows scientists to constantly watch the supervolcano and observe any changes. And it says the new system has several advantages to both YVO and to the public. First, data can be viewed within 24 hours of measurement, allowing rapid assessment of changes, changing conditions there. Equipment malfunctions can be ra rapidly detected, enabling us to identify and correct any problems. And lastly, if needed, the equipment can be queried in real time by YVO scientists.
It was also revealed on USGS's website how scientist Greg Vaughn made an abnormal find, abnormal, quote unquote, find after using NASA's thermal satellite MODIS and ASTER. It reads, Vaughn used nighttime MODIS data to establish background thermal patterns and to quantify how much temperatures would have to change to become detectable with modern space-borne techniques. Most natural thermal changes at Yellowstone within the past decade are around the detection limits of the technique, providing hope for future monitoring during more active periods. The ASTER data covers small areas, smaller areas with greater spatial detail, about 90 meters per pixel, and Vaughn was able to use ASTER to create maps showing regions where abnormal amounts of heat are released called thermal anomalies, and also to estimate surface temperatures and other aspects of heat flow. Now, as far as the recent earthquakes in Yellowstone supervolcano, Yellowstone monitoring, I'll leave a link below for you. It says here, the monitoring instruments data at Yellowstone, 74 earthquakes. The latest one was today at a magnitude 0.6 at a depth of 7.6 miles. Before that, we had uh, about six minutes before that was a 0 0.1 magnitude, 7.3 miles depth. And before that, at a 1.1 magnitude, at a 1.2 mile depth. Now we know that if we're walking around that area, let's say around the Yellowstone Lake, well, the roof of the magma chamber is about three miles down below our feet. We've had recent quakes inside the Yellowstone Lake itself, as you'll see from the map, uh, about uh, 1.9 quake, 1.1 magnitude quake, and a tremendous amount of earthquake swarm. Oh, what can I tell you? Uh, they're not big. They're about 1 point, anywhere from 1.8 to uh, 1.5. The coordinates are in the lake. Uh, around uh, West Thumb Lake. Of course, we have others, especially in the area of Montana, earthquake swarms, which are about 1.6, a magnitude 2, and uh, you'll see them yourselves on the map. We've had a 3.1 on June 18th. That's not small, of course. That's just uh, northwest of Bozeman. Now, unfortunately, the, monitor, the temperature monitors for Steamboat Geyser seem to be off again. The Steamboat Geyser new equipment that they put in don't show any uh, data whatsoever for daily or weekly. And the monthly, the last month, the last day that shows up for the monthly graph is May 26th. They, I think they um, had placed that, positioned that on May 19th. It shows the graph working as of May 20th, and it worked for just about six or seven days and then just stopped. So no more monthly temperature. I don't know what's happened to that. We're not getting any type of temperature for steamboat geyser unfortunately again this is from yellowstone volcano observatory steamboat geyser norris geyser basin base temperature If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever 
I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.